In this problem, we have a person on a ladder that has a uniform mass. The center of gravity of the ladder is at the center. The ladder has a total length of 6 meters and the center of mass is halfway down that at 3 meters. The mass of the ladder is 12 kilograms so it exerts a force of around 118 newtons straight down. The person standing on the ladder is standing at 4.5 meters up the length of the ladder and has a mass of 103 kilograms, so the person exerts a force of 1,000 newtons straight down. The surface the ladder is resting against is frictionless, and at the base of the ladder, there is a coefficient of friction of 0.7. We want to find the minimum angle that is needed at the base to keep the ladder from falling and remain stable. To solve this problem, we must first look at the free body diagram of the forces. So we have five forces one from the wall pushing back on the ladder, two from the ladder center of mass and the person on the ladder, one from the floor pushing back on the ladder, which is the normal force, and the final force is the force due to friction at the floor. Being there is no movement of the ladder, the sum of forces in the x direction must equal zero. So the force the wall is pushing on the ladder minus the force from friction at the base must equal zero. Rearranging this formula, we get that the force of the wall must be equal and opposite to the force from the friction. Being there is no movement, this also means that the sum of forces in the y direction are equal to zero. So negative force of person minus force of ladder plus the force from normal force equals zero. Rearranging this, we get that the normal force equals the force of the person plus the force from the ladder. Once again, being that the ladder is not moving, the sum of torques must also equal zero. So we will need to find the torques of all the forces when acting as if the bottom of the ladder is the pivot point. Recall that torque is the force that makes an object want to pivot times the distance the force is from the pivot point. Now in a previous video, we looked at a torque wrench that was being pulled at a 30 degree angle from perpendicular of the shaft of the torque wrench. I then used trigonometry to break down the force so we can see the force that is going tangent to the circular path around the pivot point, which we get by multiplying the red pull force times the cosine of the angle, or in other words, the cosine of 30 degrees times the pull force or hypotenuse of the force vector. We can then find the torque by multiplying the force going tangent to the circular path we just found by the distance from the pivot point. You can do it that way, but there's another way to find torques. You can take the force times the perpendicular distance to the pivot point. The perpendicular distance to the pivot point is the distance if you were to start at a right angle from the force and measure the distance before another line going at a right angle would hit the pivot point. This is calculated by taking the cosine of the angle, the wrench is being pulled from perpendicular, multiplied times the distance to the pivot point. In this example, we get the same torque if we calculate it out using the perpendicular distance as listed on this slide. The reason this works is due to the order of operations not making a difference, because everything is being multiplied together. It doesn't make a difference if you multiply cosine of the angle by the force making the object pivot first, or the cosine of the angle by the distance from the pivot point first. So now, back to the ladder problem. We need to find the perpendicular distance for the three forces acting around the pivot point of the base of the ladder. We will need to recall some trigonometry. Recall SOHCAHTOA. The SO in SOHCAHTOA means that the sine of the angle equals the opposite over hypotenuse. The CA in SOHCAHTOA means the cosine of the angle equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Rearranging these formulas, we can solve for the unknown distance. We will first find the perpendicular distance to the forces from the person on the ladder and the center of mass of the ladder. To do so, we simply solve the right triangle. You could complete this problem using the bottom corner angle. However, I decided to use the top corner to make the math later on work out simpler. Recall that a triangle's angle sum is 180 degrees. So to get the angle at the top corner, we can take 180 minus 90 degree corner to get 90 degrees. We can then subtract the angle in the bottom corner from that to get the angle of the top corner. So we are left with 90 minus theta being equal to the top corner angle. Now we can plug in all of our divins into the formula for the sine of the angle, rearranged so that the opposite is on one side of the equation. We get that the sine of the angle times the hypotenuse equals the side opposite. Plugging in all of our numbers, we get that for the person, 
the sine of 90 minus theta times 4.5 meters equals the side length opposite. For the latter, we get that the sine of 90 minus theta times 3 meters equals the side length opposite. Recall from previous videos that if a torque is going counterclockwise, it is positive, and if it is going clockwise, it is negative. We can now take our perpendicular distance to the pivot points we found and plug it into the sum of torque equation with the forces we have listed. We will also subtract the torque caused by the ladder being pressed into the wall into this equation. We now must find the perpendicular distance the force from the ladder being pressed against the wall is from the pivot point. To do so, we must use the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent length of the triangle over the hypotenuse of the triangle. Rearranging the formula to get adjacent to one side, we get that the cosine of 90 minus theta times 6 meters equals the leg adjacent, which is perpendicular distance from the pivot point to the force exerted by the wall. Now we can plug this value into the sum of torque equation with the force that is exerted from the wall. Being that frictional force is equal to the force from the wall, we need to find the frictional force. To do so, we need to remember that frictional force is equal to the force normal, which is simply the person's weight and the latter's weight added together, times the coefficient of friction. Plugging in all of our numbers, we get a force from the wall at the point right before the ladder slides of 782 newtons. We can now plug this value into the sum of torque equation at the bottom of the screen where the force from the wall is at. We now must complete some algebra to get the minimum angle before the ladder will slide. We start by moving the torque from the wall to the other side by adding it to both sides of the equation. We then can sum up and add the torque from the person and the torque from the ladder together. Next, we can divide both sides by the cosine of the angle and divide both sides by what we're multiplying the sine of the angle by, 4,854 newtons. We will need to recall in trigonometry that the sine over cosine of an angle equals the tangent of the angle. So we can simplify this to be tangent of the angle. We can then multiply and divide out the right side of the equation. We are left with the tan of 90 minus theta being equal to 0.967. Let's take the inverse tangent of both sides. We get 44.02 degrees for the top corner angle. If we take 90 degrees and subtract 44.02 degrees, we get the angle for the bottom of the ladder. We get 45.97 degrees for the minimum angle at the base before the ladder will fall. So any angle at the base that is greater than 45.97 degrees will allow for the ladder to remain stable and not fall down. That concludes this video. Hopefully I've earned a like, share, or subscription. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy one of these videos as well.